So starting my series on painting the uh, GW Battlescape, uh, I'm going to start with the rhinos and be the first uh, part of it we paint. So as well as anything, we're also going to pick out any other metal parts we can find while doing it. Uh, the color we're going to paint, the base of the rhino is this. This is Vallejo Model Air Metallic Black, which is uh, literally one of my favorite colors um, anywhere on any line and not to mention the, metallic, the model air metallics are probably one of the best paints you can simply buy period and it's probably not much of an exaggeration if you're not using um, Vallejo model air metallics I cannot recommend them I cannot possibly recommend them higher or recommend them enough um, even for brush painting they are just absolutely fantastic shouldn't need any thinning straighten the airbrush. The airbrush we're using is my Master G44, which I got on eBay. And hopefully that'll spray. That's a little bit. We'll see. Backpack, things are done here. Get these done. The helmets. There's a bolter right there. And a shoulder pad. And then another helmet over here. Let me get real quick. the inside too much. I just print it black just so it doesn't stick out, but that's about it you're gonna worry about for the inside. Okay. That'll do it. Okay. So there we go. Paint it with uh, Vallejo Model Air Black Metallic. Now we gotta let this sit and dry and go on to the next step, which is weathering. Now the base color metal has dried. We're gonna go on and do some rust effects. Uh, it's gonna be actually quite a bit rusty, and we're going to use, I'm gonna use three kind of colors for this step. One is Vallejo Model Air Rust, which I'm gonna thin down and use like a pen wash. And then we're gonna do some stippling with uh, GW Dark Flesh and Blazing Orange. Those are gonna be my primary colors. So first we're going to grab some of the Model Air Rust and we're going to actually thin it down with some Flow Aid. So we want it nice and runny. Use kind of like a pin wash. Now we're just going to go over kind of like this details. Let some let it uh, the capillary action do the work. Capillary action do the work for us uh, more than uh, brushing it on. details like this, especially around the bullet holes, and don't be afraid, kind of let the rust, let it stream down in, in a um, logical direction for where it is, in other words, down, especially this, see, this thing here, you're going to get some nice effects here.
anyway. Get pretty much everywhere that we can. And the thing with the Vallejo paints is they have a tendency to separate quickly, so I have to mix it constantly. So let me go ahead and pause the video here and finish this step, and then we'll be right back. Okay, I finished the uh, rust, the uh, model of rust step. You can see I've done pretty much all the edges around here, and I went over and got some of the other bits too. Uh, the other two colors we're going to be doing uh, mostly stippling. Uh, there's different ways you can do this. You could use sponges as a common technique, but my personal favorite is just go old-fashioned stippling. Now we're going to go over pretty much the entire model, the entire Rhino, and other metal bits. First the dark flesh pretty much everywhere. Give it a nice rusty look. Dark flesh is a good color for this because it's got quite a bit of orange in it. So it's a great color for rust. I don't want a whole lot of paint on the brush. I'm going to dab a lot of it off. Just stipple the whole thing. And it's also fairly translucent, so it's definitely going to be. It's definitely. Uh, darker when you first put it on than when it's dry. Nice thing about stippling is it doesn't take very long. So I'm going to finish my stippling with the dark flesh and once that's dry I'll be right back. So I finished the stippling with the uh, dark flesh and now for the blazing orange we're going to use a combination of the stippling and some dry brushing because we're going to put the Blazing orange, we want to try and concentrate that on the edges, corners, and other places that would be rusting first. So we're going to give, start off with a very light dry brush. Brush here, very. And what this will do is this will concentrate the orange on the high areas, which is where it would probably be in the first place. Put some extra effort on the treads, the areas that would be. Especially rusty. Okay. And since this isn't an exact science, I'm not really worried about getting too much or too little but just keep going until it looks right to you I mean if you want to uh, go around go search for pictures of rusty old rusty wrecks uh, trains anything like that try and get a feel on how things rust uh, that's always a good see so now it gives a very distinctly uh, orange feel to the to the rust but without being overbearing Some areas a few spots here on these wide open flat areas which we can't really dry brush very well oh I'm really liking how that's turning out so far I need some more on the side. I didn't really dry brush the side yet. 
Maybe this one plays the orange. Get all the non tank bits throughout the piece, like the backpack here, uh, the treads, this helmet over here, and these guns over here. I think I'm going to dry brush right on off the wall. <laughs> It's a train piece, of course. There we go. Now that's looking nice. I'm really liking how this has turned out. So more here on the edges. And concentrate on the edges, the better it's going to look in my opinion. Exaggerate anymore, go around and stipple on the edges, just the edges. Because it's where the rust is going to be most prominent, is on areas like that. Andrews can't quite get with the dry brush. Okay. That's looking great. That is looking. Which spots I forgot? Mm -hmm. I need to get them in there a little bit more. So anyway, I'm going to uh, pause it here, and yeah, that's that's exactly the way I wanted to come out. So now the next step is going to require to let this dry thoroughly, and we're going to grab the airbrush for the next step. Okay, now that our rust stuff is dried, uh, we're going to go on to the next step of weathering, which is going to involve this. Yes, hairspray. If you've never seen the hairspray technique before, uh, it's going to be quite interesting. But essentially what happens, let me explain this to you as I'm getting this ready to go. What happens is that you spray a hairspray underneath the base color, the color, and what's going to happen is that once the color dries, you can add in and get it wet, and it will actually um, scrape off, leaving a very natural rusty pattern. So we're just going to take some uh, some cheap cheap uh, hairspray, which I got at the dollar store, and no fragrance, no extra nothing, just plain ordinary hairspray. And everywhere there's metal, we're just going to give it. Good wet coat of hairspray, and just for some additional dimensions, I add in a little bit of table salt while it's wet. It's ordinary table salt. I do this while it's wet though. It dries pretty quick. And what this will do is provide spottiness to the the rust effects. It's getting pretty thick in order to stay wet enough to get salt to stick. And table salt is great because not only is it um, of just about the right size for the scale, of course it's readily available. Spray a little bit of it so it's good and nice, good, good thick wet coat. Salt will actually stick to the hairspray, which is what we want. And then what will happen when we go to rub it off, salt will just fall off.
You don't need a lot of it unless you really want a lot of it. Necessarily want a lot of it. On all areas that I some areas more than others. do it, the more dramatic the effect. Okay, I think that'll just about do it for that part. The best part is the hairspray doesn't take very long to dry. So we're going to uh, call this step done. And then when this is dry completely, we will move on to the base color. Okay, we've let the hairspray dry. And so next we're going to do the base color of the Rhino, which I'm going to do in uh, Vallejo Game Color Ultramarine Blue. And it's nothing particular against Ultramarines. I don't have anything against them. It's just that the Ultramarines Blue will provide the best stark contrast in color between the um, dirt and the rust and the color itself. Because you do it in red, you know, something like uh, Blood Angels, obviously you're not going to get a lot of contrast. And we definitely want the contrast to show, be exaggerated. Paint out a little bit. Using Windex for my thinning. No, that's too thin. Crap. That's too thin. That's more paint. It's always, always a balancing act with the airbrush. That's a little better. It's nice and consistent. Okay. Straight on. Actually, we want to get this coat of paint probably just as thin as we possibly can. Make it easier to do the weathering stuff. I'm gonna put a bunch of paint right here. Oops, it's not a frame. I'm gonna put a whole bunch of paint here on this exposed uh, exhaust stack. That doesn't make any sense. Basically what's going to happen is I'm just going to paint the whole thing blue, so uh, I'm going to pause the video, be right back. Okay, so there we go. Completed the blue coat. As you can see, I also hit the, the gun and the shoulder pad and the uh, backpack here with the blue. And no, I don't know if I put hairspray on the shoulder pad or not. Anyway, so what you're going to do now is let this cure. I found that just letting it dry is not enough. You actually need to let the paint cure completely. So I'm going to let this sit for 24 hours before I go on to the next step. Thanks for watching.